Hello everybody and welcome to Amphi Reviews, back with another Japanese insight and deep dive into some of my collection and some very interesting Japanese titles. Uh, some are going to be great, some are going to be like okay, and some are going to be pretty bad. But that's the adventure to go on to on these movies, very similar to Hong Kong cinema. And uh, I definitely want to explore a lot more Japanese titles alongside other types of regions, which I will be doing slowly, a bit by bit, in between other Hong Kong cinema content, which is the kind of the main channels for. But for today's video, we're diving back into Kenshi Fukusaka's filmography and to some of my collection, which is the Graveyards of Honor. I have the double pack edition featuring the original and the remake uh, from Arrow Edition, which is a really nice uh, little package. I got this quite some time ago. You do get a really extensive uh, booklet if you've got the special edition on there. And you also get your standard Blu-ray editions either side. So without further ado, let's dive into the original entry from Kenji Fukusaka's Graveyard of Honor. <laughs> Graveyard of Honor, released in 1975, by Kenji Fukusoka, of course. And this is uh, diving more into his kind of Yakuza-based movies, his library, which he has done so many of, as mentioned in my previous video for Sympathy for the Underdog. And it's kind of finding the kind of diamonds in the rough. There are so many of these kind of Japanese Yakuza-based movies, and so many he did, uh, you know, building up to his, on what, 60th movie with Battle Royale, diving into his previous movies, and to kind of see what he kind of stood for, what kind of movies he was making, what the kind of audience demand was, what, what was receiving well, and him doing a biographical movie based on a novel of the same name of a real life Yakuza gangster uh, that was, did all this really crazy kind of, you know, completely bonkers, you know, um, madcap kind of stuff in real life, whether you call him an official proper gang member, whether you call him a lunatic, um, is down for you to decide, but this character and this real life person uh, did a lot of the stuff that was portrayed in this film. Whether a lot of it is accurate, I don't I haven't read the book, I haven't read much insight into this Yakuza gang member, but he is kind of known during that time frame uh, for some of the actions and some of the things he did uh, leading up to his death, uh, in, of course, in real life. And uh, this film is a 90 minute film, as one of the things I mentioned about previously for Sympathy for the Underdog. I really like a nice, tight, lean uh, 90 minute kind of thriller. Um, you know, with accuser movies, you know, especially Japanese accuser movies, there are so many of them, very similar to kind of Shaw Brothers movies. And it comes into question what kind of film are you looking for, what kind of movie uh, stands out above the crowd, you know, which kind of movie is, does something more for you compared to some others, because there are going to be some movies that, you know, are nice one-offs, uh, some movies that are thinking that was excellent, but do I see myself revisiting that film again? Number one is story. Very, very important to get your story right and to get a kind of a sense of you know, cohesion and kind of a narrative structure. Or if you're playing with time or playing with kind of, you know, a, a chronicle of events, you have to make it interesting and engaging. Number two is characters. You know, am I investing in the characters? Am I investing in this journey? You know, is it a, uh, a darker movie? Is it a more of a lighter film? What kind of story, what kind of characters am I getting in this world that's being created for me? Then anything else after that is all kind of secondary, essentially, or third or fourth or fifth. And unfortunately for Graveyard of Honor, this film was one of them. Um, this film did not work for me at all. Uh, I was initially on board with this film for the first kind of like 35 minutes or so. I was curious to see what this film was trying to go for. Uh, the film is, as mentioned, a biographical movie. And in terms of storytelling wise, in terms of the visuals and how it's portrayed this version of, of you know this character's life this real life accuser gang member you know in terms of having like actual pictures i believe and having like you know recorded articles and recorded kind of you know family members and people that have said what this person was like in real life on the one hand of the film i like how the film is presented in terms of this kind of madcap kind of rush kind of movie it's very kind of erratic and it's kind of you know it's visual storytelling and it's, you know, it's camera work is very kind of it is shaky cam and it is kind of chaotic and messy and you don't know what's going on in places. There's times where people are just so screaming and shouting and, you know, it feels like a madcap movie. This character is completely off his rocker, you know, he's completely insane and doesn't really have the intelligence uh, to kind of, you know, be a boss or to kind of, you know, hold a gang or hold a relationship. The character that's so despicable and so nasty and just kind of, you know, so deliberately shown on screen as, you know, doing horrible things and being erratic and kind of just, 
you know, not thinking, you know, just reacting, you know, like killing people or you know, stabbing people, doing disgusting things, uh, vile things, and somehow still manage to have some sort of friends and have a weird kind of, you know, uh, rape love story angle going on the film. It's politics with the ideas of, you know, Japan losing the war against America, and you've got the, the third nationalist that's mentioned in the film as a mixture of Chinese, um, kind of Korea and Taiwanese uh, kind of immigrants, I guess, coming into Japan and they have territory, there's kind of rival kind of back and forth in terms of the, the gang members and the clans and that's creating a lot of tension, a lot, a lot of anger. You've got the Americans doing some very shady dealings as well, which are kind of basically a gang in themselves, even though they are the screen presence are very limited into the film itself. So you've got this really kind of pressure cooker kind of city and situation and kind of time frame having that as a backdrop of this character being completely like just insane and just undeliberately to kind of again make you hate this character and to make you kind of pissed off a little bit you know eventually just going to drugs and he's eventually kind of stealing and threatening his own kind of crew members uh for kind of for dope and for money and you know it's a very despicable character and you know in terms of a feel in terms of a pulse yes i think it has that i think it has a lot of rage uh, in terms of what it's trying to go for, it has a lot of anger. In terms of you know what you know Japanese people were feeling during that time, how probably Yakuza kind of gang members and, and clans were reacting to kind of like the changes and losing the war during that time period. Um, that stuff is interesting, and I think the behind the scenes nature of it is a lot more is a lot more interesting than the actual film itself. The filmmaking is a bit more interesting itself. And when you have that as your main character and you don't really have much else going on in the film, apart from this one particular individual and how he affects everyone around him and his kind of spear. And this is set between like a kind of a 10 year period of his kind of time as a gang member facing off his own boss and having weird alliances and just doing very shady, very questionable things. Uh, the film is erratic, it's very chaos-based, it's very angry, it's very rageful. The storytelling visual side is more interesting than the ultimate quality of the film in terms of the story and the characters mentioned. And for me, that makes for a very unsatisfying, very uneventful kind of journey uh, through this film. And it's a damn shame because there is some qualities that I did appreciate the film trying to go for. But So what are your thoughts and opinions on Graveyard of Honor? Uh, do you think the remake is a much better entry? Do you think that'll be a much more interesting kind of take? And it's from the director of Audition, which I really, really like. So let's see if that remake can kind of, you know, do something interesting in that material. Let's see and compare and contrast. In the meantime, guys, I'm through reviews. Signing out.